Hey, what's up, everybody? Doing well, dog. It seems like I have to restart my stream key pretty much every time I want to stream now. YouTube likes to swap it out on me, so... <laughs> so, sometimes you might see a couple false starts, but I'm just... No idea why, but there we go. How's everybody doing? It's, uh... See, it's a Thursday, it's lunchtime, taking lunch off to stream some nerd stuff. It's awesome. Um, really digging the uh, new uh, the new kits. Obviously, I did the, the review of all the uh, the new Primaris guys, the new Imperium Space Marine guys, and they're they're really neat. Um, obviously, the big the big fa uh, the big problem that you have with it is the uh, just kind of the duplication. That's the only kind of real issue, especially with these push fits. You figured that they could be a little bit better, but of course, we turn the heads and all that. Um, in this new kit uh, on the Demonkin side, there are no repeats at all. Um, so. Oh man, first day off in six days. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been absolutely crazy for me too. It's uh, work has been absolutely nuts, but I mean, there's uh, worse problems than that, I guess. But um, it, it it makes the escape into kind of nerdery even more important, right? <laughs> so, um, so obviously, what I got here is I've got um, kind of some of my my favorite models from kind of the new range you can even see here on our um, aspiring champion you can even see that he's still got the the old 25 mil base on him there but um, oh man really really like the the older models uh, obviously the the older space marines um, the chaos space marine kit this is the one that came in um, this guy was rocking with a couple of thousand sons friends this is when you'll be able to mix different factions and with different things so he was like their consultant giving them the involved save and all that and of course, some of my absolutely favorite models um, that kind of came out that were new and interesting were the possessed models. These were kind of the nice, newer, higher density plastics. And uh, yeah, these ones were pretty cool as well. Um, the reason that uh, these guys are on the table, basically, is I just wanted to show kind of a sense of scale. And I'm going to keep coming back to it as we go. And we're going to find that the new guys are taller, they're bigger models, but you can still use some of your old dudes as well, which is, which is really nice to be able to play with anyway. Off next week going to Warhammer World. The wife wanted to take me. Nice. See, when your woman's involved in your hobby, that's kind of amazing. Uh, my uh, my uh, girlfriend slash wife, she doesn't want anything to do with the hobby. <laughs> but uh, we go hike mountains together. That's the thing. She's a crazy strong woman, so uh, we do that all the time. Music seems. But yeah, no. So we um, yeah we uh, it's kind of a. Kind of a curse, um, uh, a, a boon. I don't know. It's uh, sometimes you kind of want that time yourself, whatever. But whatever. It's uh, <laughs> we all get different options. All right. So let's get into the um, let's get into the models now. Again, um, I'm really liking the fact that the demon related stuff is supported now. Way back um, when I had Epidemius and I had a bunch of Nurgle marked guys, uh, you wanted Nurgle marked obliterators because they were demons. You wanted you know, possessed because they were demons, right? Um, and on the on the uh, the um, the the new corn book, they wanted kind of that uh, possessed tax to get some of the cool formations. But um, so I, I rigged up about six of these guys, including where is he? So they all got their different poses and stuff. The reason that I'm not flooding the camera with them is the red is showing up really weirdly uh, today. It's kind of an odd thing. Look at this old guy. I love him. Look, he's like all metal. He's got these metal tentacly bits, and you have to like glue the bits to the other bits to kind of maintain that uh, that stability. Yeah, it's just awesome. Put a new pack on him. Put him on a 32 mil base. Yeah, he's just yeah, he's horrible. Yeah, no, it's horrible. But I mean, kind of the old fugly possessed models are fantastic. He's very cool with my hobby business. She brings. Oh, nice. I'm gonna get merchandise and get shirts made soon. You buy it, so she's very supportive. Awesome, man! I'm glad to hear that. That's wicked. Um, okay, so we got the um, the uh, the the possessed here, and um, I'll, I'll bring him out a little bit later as well. I just want to kind of just have him up for just kind of an opening reference. So let's start with the basic troops now. What I'm digging so much about these guys is again there are no 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 duplicates at all and that is the coolest thing uh for me i just like the uniqueness all the way through but we'll kind of look at them just kind of one at a time um putting them together was great um a subtle thing and i actually meant to say this with the um the the 
the Vanguard guys too, is it's a very subtle thing. Other than the guys that are essentially kind of running with their arms outstretched and all that, all of them could stand on their own without bases. So I was assembling them all. And it sounds kind of weird, but I really like the fact that when they are balanced like that, they look natural. Like they look like they could be balanced in real life, even though they're on a base. Now again, the flat out run effects, you know, they're not all that balanced. Um, but the, each of these guys could kind of stand literally on their own two feet. And it made such a huge, uh, huge difference. So we've got the guy, uh, you know, our sergeant of the squad, the aspiring champ. And um, this is kind of one of the ones I wanted to start off with. There's some great, oh man, there's some great little details and kind of knocks here and there that I really, really like. I love the old school uh, chaos backpacks. There's the new ones here, right? Um, is, is there one of them in here? There's a couple of the older ones, but they've all got that kind of nice ribbing. They've definitely kept that in there, that um, kind of scaled type thing. Um, each of the you know vents on the side has been replaced with skulls. There's spikes everywhere, but not completely and totally spikes. They kind of went with the same design methodology as the Primaris, where you got lots of ridges that you can highlight or you know uh, black line or what have you. Um, they kept a whole bunch of the old kind of flavor to it. They've got the old basically the Mark IV, you know. Um, you know, cabling kind of up front. So around the time of the heresy when these guys went into the uh, Eye of Terror, uh, they've got all those different pieces. They've also brought in this kind of universal, that um, the kind of the star, and we saw that a lot on Cultists in the Dark Vengeance set, but um, uh, you can see this iconography all the way through and all the fetishes and all that. Um, now, obviously, they kept the, the kind of the god markings, uh, the faction markings off of these guys so you could set them up as anything that you wanted. So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do uh, with these guys here. I was, I was really enjoying the the kind of the fluff of the red Corsairs. Um, I really like the, the kind of the, the feeling of these guys that weren't totally chaos-y. Like, on the, you know, they didn't pull the chaos lever all the way, but they just were really unhappy with kind of the... Um, kind of that uh, the overlord mentality of the Imperium. So, uh, you know, these big space pirates kind of off and go and doing their thing. I thought that was kind of a cool, uh, cool backdrop anyway. Um, lots of 3D kind of relief here for the uh, symbology, the eight pointed star. And uh, yeah, lots of animation in this guy. Like, really, really cool. You know, he's kind of urging these guys on. Very, uh, very, very Mad Max. Very cool. Um, you got the horned guys here, obviously, uh, you know, the, you know, seeing the obvious mutation, separating them up from the space marines is pretty cool. Uh, the standard kind of chain sword. Um, but what's kind of neat about this is it's got this, it's got like a little bit of an exposure in here. So you get extra blades and each of the chain swords tends to be a little bit more, uh, unique, which I think is just really cool. Like just having, again, these unique sculpts in there, lots of spikies. There's your little eight pointed star at the bottom, you know, just a little bit of that kind of hint that's in there. Uh, again, the 3D relief on it, but again, a totally different symbol uh, than what we had on uh, the other guys there. Uh, the more traditional chaos uh, backpack going on here. But I also like that it's WYSIWYG. When I had my uh, older uh, chaos marines, one of the big things that I, I made sure of was that I saw guys with bolters, and I saw guys with bolt pistols, and I saw guys with close combat weapons. Just to kind of remind me that it was a thing that they had all of them. So it's nice to see them all in different poses, and that's exactly how I uh, set them up in the past. Uh, you'll also notice that on the um, on the the champion, you've got a whole bunch of a kind of extra fetishes on the tier here. You've got the chains and all that. Um, and on this guy, you've got more just kind of a simple thing, but with a really kind of cool. Uh, kind of belt buckle <laughs> type of iconography there. Uh, the studded shin pads are uh, pretty cool too. And I just love how unique each each guy is. It's pretty nice. Hey Lucy, how you doing? <laughs> nice. Uh, you're gonna see in here too that we've got uh, this guy with the bolter, and instead of having the um, I think nice the drum magazine gives you something a little bit different to look at. And of course that chain uh, in there with the uh, icon just kind of rung around the chain is pretty cool. Uh, it's just a neat kind of alternative to all the leather straps and stuff that we have on the other guys. Again, that kind of Mark IV cross banding. And then just this nice kind of, uh, you know, the tabards here are pretty cool. I also like the fact that they've got these kind of strung on pistols it's not like they're all kind of geared up they're all just strapped on with all that gear and again going back to the old school backpacks for these guys 
and they've got you know a lot of detail but again not too much different kind of belt buckle structure and just kind of the the insides kind of neat too it's just got this little kind of banding in there showing the under carapace uh, pretty solid i don't mind that at all uh the knives are kind of cool look like you know these ritualistic type things uh not you know the straight up standard you know stabby stabby punchy punchy but uh yeah this one would hurt going in and out for sure yeah and so there's loads of detail to paint but it's not exactly um overwhelming and i like the fact that they give you a couple of guys that look like they could be sergeants obviously with the uh or sorry uh, you know the aspiring champions i like it because um you know there's two guys that are kind of more dynamic and standing out he could just be one of the guys charging forward or he could you know be there your second uh you know your second sergeant there if you wanted um again lots of detail on the fetishes all here uh you know the big kind of trademark skulls because you know g-dub you know the the eye of horus the eight pointed star off of that is kind of cool and of course they've kind of maintained that aesthetic too of the of the bolter rounds kind of you know just dangling around no magazines for these guys a little top knot just uh you know just sometimes you know you just need to do the extensions thing right so you can just throw your top knot back on when you know, get a big like rare earth magnet and you know tap it on there put it on your head or put it on your helmet you know it's important fashion fashion is really where it's at for sure um again just a little bit of a different uh kind of chain sword with that blade up front like just gruesome and gory nice moving along we got your stand and deliver kind of guy uh he's got uh let's see he doesn't have the blade on here he's got the spikes because you need spikes and teeth for this uh that kind of nice you know protected grip and the chains i mean i love this i love this mix and it's, it you know was kind of first saw it in the chaos terminators where you get the um uh the chain link kind of mesh and then you've got the uh you know the tabard in the back and it's just a nice kind of two layers of depth but it it breaks up the model whatever color you're doing you can get that nice metallic -y sheen in there you know different kind of fetish head there which is cool and of course the classic kind of symbology you know with the with the upwards facing the kind of the perversion of the tactical uh the tactical arrow the arrow there the little kind of sensors in the back again lots of variety with um the backpacks here and what's also nice is that the backpacks are all um uh, you know they're not all kind of part of the model they're all individually glued on so you could shuffle out backpacks if you wanted um the arms in a lot of cases are integrated but a quick saw or a clip and you could swap out your arms you could make a lot of different variants with the the kit that comes in this box for sure another kind of standoffy guy here again different kind of buckle i love this banding actually i didn't even notice that before um something a little bit different um then on what the space marines have that mark four back and forth nice like really really cool different chain sword again but again super simple to paint i mean i think uh yeah we'll go in here with like the darker kind of golds or silvers or whatever we ever whatever we end up choosing uh, with the corsairs i'm actually going to go with the black uh this time i kind of did a metallic trim last time and i think i thought the black was kind of dumb and then i looked at it i'm like no it's not too bad so We'll have to see, maybe. But anyway, no, just uh, neat. You can see the eye punching through the, the cowling of the bolt pistol there. That's just a nice little detail. And I like how each of the guys, when you can see their faces or you see their helmets, they all look angry. Like, like that's, that's kind of one of the best parts, for sure. <laughs> Lucy, you're doing up your Black Legion this weekend? Nice. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to be doing with these guys. I do think the Black Legion is a pretty darn cool color scheme, um, you know, better than the classic reds. Um, and it's so easy to do kind of blacks now when we, you know, implement that wash. So who knows? Who knows? Um, kind of a new uh, bolter. He's got the magazine in there. They got kind of a cool little bit of like this. This is kind of cool. It's like a quarter of the eight-pointed star, which is neat. These guys are gonna be a blast to paint for sure. I'm sure you guys are loving them as you're as you're going through. Classic chaos backpack there. But yes, yeah, super simple to paint. So I think they'll paint up rather quickly for sure. And that kind of like split maw, very predator. Look at that. Cool faces on the new models too. They've kind of they've stuck with a lot of uh, traditional type stuff, but they've also kind of you know really mixed it up a bit. This guy's got the you know the 
the kind of the horns on the head that that stylized ribbed horns that you've seen in the the terminators and some of the old old marines i love being able to see this little bit of um and you saw this a little bit with death guard is that kind of chain link armor just kind of hanging down from out from under the pauldrons there uh, really nice that kind of grating on the back a little bit reminiscent of the um of what you see in the primaris now some of the assault packs and they're all unique and different that's the I think that's the neatest part of this whole thing, is there's no repetition. You've got the plasma gun, and you can see that they've got these... It looks a little Dark Eldar, actually, you know, that kind of flavor to it. But, um, you know, even going up and punching somebody with this thing would be brutal. The chair with all the, uh, the, the kind of, you know, fetishes at the bottom and iconography. Really cool. And they've got a lot of neat different faces coming out of the shoulder pauldrons, which is kind of nice. It looks like they've really invested um, a bit of time in making sure that each of these guys kind of has their own, you know, um, kind of flavor to them for sure. Uh, look at the auto cannon on this guy. So very classic. We used to have to convert these over, of course, with the old Terminators. And then the arms looking a little weird. But now that these are all integrated in, really nice. Even the kind of the interlocking chain there with the spikies on it. Uh, that's sweet. Targeter on his eye. Going back up over his head, looks like a chunk of his skull has been replaced by augmented, uh, kind of augmentation. Um, the one thing I was a little disappointed in was I didn't see any of the, um, you know, any of the kind of the cool belt work that they've done in the past. Um, clearly, they've just got the, uh, you know, the drums up here, and you can just reload the drum by reaching over his head. But uh, I man, did I ever really think that was cool? Just having those those kind of um, the carriages there to 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 you know bring up the rounds. So together as a unit, um, it, you know, there's a lot of value in what you get in the box in terms of the, you know, just the regular vanilla Marines. Um, let's take a look now at the, uh, at the Greater Possessed, kind of the, uh, the next kind of elite. Yeah, I think they're an elite choice, right? Um, so they'll flag in with your, uh, uh, your demonic guys, um, and they're right in line with the old school Possessed models. Now, here's the thing that I don't mind at all, where they're the same size, essentially. They're just a little beefier and a little kind of larger dynamically. Um, you know, longer arms, longer claws and talons. But, you know, they do feel like they fit right in and just have a little bit more of a stature, but kind of a half a head taller, uh, which, is, which is pretty sweet. I don't mind that at all. Very cool. So let's uh, let's take a look at these guys here. Um, I think uh, when they were talking to Goodwin on the the podcast, there they were talking about how they had uh, the 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 sloppy kind of wet guy uh, with the mouths and everything, and then they had the crunchy guy with all the bones and spikes and all of that. And you can definitely see those those themes kind of coming through. Um, I like the the chitinous guy here. He kind of reminds me of the original chaplains, you know, doing a big kind of rib cage where the armor which is designed to kind of protect them has mutated. And you can see that it's the armor because you've got this, you've got this little remainder of the kind of the cowling over there. So these guys were very definitely Marines at some point. Obviously you got all the trappings of the power armor, but there is just absolutely no doubt with the backpacks, you know, kind of the big fist here, but they just, they've completely been taken over and it's really tough to see where the, where the metal ends and the being is, right? So very very cool like the big spine coming out of the backbone of this they've got the four uh, vents that have just kind of come out with all the, the little vertebrae bits up across the top and just violent like just absolutely violent as this thing is like lunging forward um before i had him on the base and i just had the one arm and all that he would look like he was trying to pull that uh that daniel sun uh karate kick out of uh out of Karate Kid, where you know he's kind of got one knee up and all that, but then I got him on the base. He looked a little bit different, but I had a little chuckle to myself about that. Um, again, kind of lending to the animation. We got this chain with this skull coming out the back. Ah, just brutal and vicious. Angry mother. Nice. Yeah, Lucy, they're awesome. They're they're great. And then, of course, you got like kind of the fleshy guy. So instead of having, you know, the kind of the chitinous armor, this guy's got, you know, the, the big kind of crab claw, lobster claw thing coming up front. Bet you'd be good with butter, though. Um, but um, 
he's got you know kind of the chest is splitting open organically he looks a little more kind of bonded he's got his tongue coming out of his helmet now so definitely a little bit more uh possessed in kind of the um the lifey kind of aspect of things you know gonna grab people and in my uh my palm will chew your face off very cool and i like that it's kind of corroded and kind of just splitting apart like um i don't know kind of reminds me of the eggs on aliens but these these kind of chitinous splits as the goop is kind of making their way out he's exploding new mutations all the time even on the back every little opening is the mouth you know ready to kind of grab and what's also neat now i actually saw this in the obliterators as well is they actually played a little bit with the different feet so you got this demonic kind of almost monkey style foot and then you've got the uh you know kind of the boot with the mechanical claws at the front and that kind of asymmetry that they've really pulled off looks awesome you got the big spikes kind of coming bursting through the armor really nice and on this guy here you just got the two different hooves uh so yeah just lots of different um kind of ways to look at what the mutation is and they're just as weird or as strange as uh, the regular possessed in there. So having those guys kind of running around together, uh, especially with um, the crazy summoning guy, um, the uh, master of possession, his psychic powers or the psychic powers that come for the demon kin, uh, they really, really boost up uh, the demonic side of things. And if you look, everything in here is kind of a, a demon engine. Um, I've got an old Warpsmith model that I might be... Uh, kind of doing the dark mechanicum thing i might pull that out of uh it's basically been kind of prime black um, but i gotta mount it on a bigger base and um and just kind of bring that in but man wouldn't that be cool to have these demonic engines and these guys that boost up anything that's a demon uh there's loads we can do that'll that'll boost that up and make it look super cool all right nice yeah no i just really i think these two models even though they're not the the venom crawler you know they're not the master of possession and they're not the new sculpts for the chaos marines um i think they're looking awesome looking really really good oh something to think of while we're talking about size uh comparisons uh i just wanted to take two seconds and show you kind of rewinding rewinding a bit i wanted to show you the difference um between the different sculpts oops wrong one uh so you can see that the uh, Aspiring Champion, the new one, was a little bit taller than the regular Space Marines, but that's kind of a cool stature thing. But he's in line with the new Chaos Space Marine guys now, too. So that's awesome. So they'll fit in great. So some of those old models are fit just fine. Um, but with the old uh, Chaos Space Marines, the new guys, they're definitely little, you know, they're definitely thicker kind of limbs, um, a little taller in stature. They're about a head or a half a head taller, depending on what, what kind of pose or posture they have. But they still fit in. So you get the new sculpts and you can still use some of your old, you know, Havocs if you still have them or what have you. I, I don't even want to look at the new Havocs yet. Um, man, they look awesome. Uh, you know, just just kind of putting that extra little bit of detail in there with the rotary cannons. And, oh man, I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know right now. It's, uh, I'll get these guys painted up and then I'll start taking a look <laughs> for sure. Um, now the next up, let's take a look at the, uh, the new obliterators. And I think they're awesome. I think they're really, really good. I think um, we've needed something like this for a while. Now, I actually converted up my own obliterators, and I had to, the old metal ones, right, with the, you know, kind of small arms. And what I did is I pinned their arms out, literally pinned their arms out and then kind of green stuffed in, you know, their armpits to kind of give them a big, wide stature. And funny enough, that's exactly what happened uh, here as well i also went and took like all kinds of different weapons like off of sentinels and like you know raided the bits box and wanted to give them a, a big variety of different things auto cannons and all that so it kind of really widened out their stature and these guys are doing the same thing they're kind of honestly you just kind of picture them um you know like you know waving arms around shooting this gun and the other gun comes up and they you know shoot plasma and whatever and these ones are just kind of assembled you know what i mean it looks like they're all kind of snapped together where the other ones would kind of grow their own weapons now in the rules they've consolidated it all down a lot less bookkeeping uh but holy crap i mean i think it's like strength six plus d3 that's effing nuts like for strength um and then you know d6 shots coming out of each or or, or what have you or was d3 but anyway i gotta look at the rules again but um holy cow like just capabilities on the field are great 
clock in about 115 points each. Like, really, really good. I can see what the fuss is about. Um, I've also seen that people have gone in and they've taken uh, the arms, which are unique on their own, cut off the tabs, and they would pose them in different directions, and they could get about six unique different kind of combinations and poses off of swapping different arms from different dudes and different angles and all that. So, yeah, it looked, looked pretty darn awesome. Now, it cannot be denied the... Um, the connection to basically that the hell brute um and obviously they've leaned very heavily even in this case a little bit imposing um they've leaned very heavily on the the hell brute here so you can see little things like you've got the these kind of sharpy kind of bony tentacles coming out uh you've got the the front bit of protection with the demonic uh, elements in the back and then you've got you know, that kind of face coming from the many mouths uh, type thing even this kind of um uh, this kind of cod piece kind of thing here. Uh, you've actually got that in the obliterators as well. So they took all the things that kind of worked from the Hellbrute. Um, the model's a little unbalanced, obviously. That uh, multi-melt is really short-barreled compared to the big fist that comes out the side. Um, but in general, you know, it was, a, it was a really cool kind of neat concept to do. And now they've taken that kind of demon-infested machinery, which is exactly what the obliterators are all about. And they've done that. So we've got the multiple mouths. We've got the heads with all the cabling kind of going back off into the uh, the armor or the body. Um, outside of that front bit of protection, you can see that they've got all this kind of demonic musculature that's grown in um, as these guys were possessed, you know, from that kind of machine cult. Now, it is nice that they're not the same sculpt or even have the same weapons just swapped out, what have you. Uh, it is nice to have that little bit of variety. But you can see definitely a lot of the trappings, even the kind of the spine at the back you can see a lot of the trappings of the of the hell brute there for sure but um even kind of that uh it's tough to see but that kind of scratched up dinged up almost looks like a wooden kind of texture uh, to the armor there but yeah just really nice like lots and lots of detail and it's it's nice because they're not they're not too badly posed. I like the fact that they're on 50 mil bases, which is which is also kind of a subtle, nice thing. So you can you know you can keep them together relatively uh, relatively close. Um, you can definitely on the feet. You can see some of the different influences of the other pieces as well. So this guy's got his kind of demonic, you know, kind of uh, you know you can see the toes and the it is very much uh, this kind of weird kind of multi-platform evolved. Uh, foot with the toenails and all of that the kind of the demonic look and this guy screams centurions to me i'm i don't know if i'm not gonna if i'm the only person who sees that but kind of that stable uh footed mechanical base so it just kind of screams like some influences from the centurions as well yeah really nice um the actual iconography is all in 3d on the shoulder pads which i think is great uh super easy to paint but there's still loads of texture in here as well so we can pick that up with a wash or what have you um the other thing that's nice is i mean it's not like they're they might change the rules in the future but um they've got you know all these different types and weapons of guns to justify that big heavy strength and that kind of randomness depending on who's shooting with what I um, wonder if they're kind of like the orcs and they just want to like fly Dak out like crazy. Seems like it'd be nice and loud and, you know, atrociously vicious. Uh, and the rules are pretty darn sexy as well. I'm really liking those. The pistons in the back to kind of drive the feet forward. And this guy's got them there too. Again, very much trappings of the old Imperium technology. Yeah, really nice. And they brought in that rotary cannon, that kind of a salty cannon thing. It's pretty sweet. Hey, Dimitri, how you doing? Um, but yeah, so really digging it. I'm, I'm, you know, the Oblitz are pretty cool. Um, we can bring them in threes, so either find three sets or, you know, sell off your, uh, sell off your, one of your, you know, if you buy two sets or whatever, you can sell off your single and make someone else a third. Um, absolutely great. And with all the kind of the reposability of the, um, the chaos, like the regular vanilla Marines, that'd be pretty cool. Like, I mean, you can get your value out of a second box for sure. For sure. Um, now again, they're demons, so they help uh, all the kind of the demonic um, from the master of possession. All the kind of demonic enhancing powers uh, will definitely help these guys out as well. Pretty neat. Um, let's move now on to what I thought was going to be a bigger model. Now this is my fault. I'm looking at it on kind of a larger uh, monitor. 
uh, and you know you can always get nice and close in the photos and it takes up all the the room in the world um, when I first saw it I was a little kind of like I saw it kind of put together I was a little disappointed by the size of it but I think that's that's just my fault now from this guy's perspective I'm sure it's not uh, very small at all and then I got to thinking I think that smaller size um, I think there's a benefit to it well one it brings it more in line with kind of um, that kind of dreadnought uh, scale. It's got a big base, but it kind of brings in that kind of dreadnought scale, which is, you know, he's taller and stuff, but um, it gives you a lot more flexibility kind of mixing dudes in, trying to get them into combat. Uh, whereas if it was a big monster, uh, I think you'd be able, you know, your opponent would have a little bit more of an advantage kind of getting to you, but it'd be harder for you to get to them. Um, so not not a bad not a bad size for sure. And the store's a little nicer as well. I just like the fact that this thing is freaking terrifying. Like it's um, it's uh, I, I, I didn't put it on the, um, uh, the base because I want to be able to paint the underside a little bit easier. Um, it's absolutely terrifying. Um, my wife, when she was a kid, she was cleaning out the eaves uh, of of her parents' house, and they lived out in the country. And she saw this. Uh, she calls them big bum spiders, right? And it bit her, and her hands swole up like crazy. And she's not really allergic to anything, but uh, she's now terrified. Not of spiders, but of big bum spiders. So, <laughs> so if she ever she sees a big bum, she's like, nope, checking out. And I think there's something to that. There's an emotional kind of rationalization that these big bum spiders are, uh, you know, they're not that great for you. So on that roll alone, this would be absolutely terrifying. Now, what's neat about this is obviously it stands on its own. It's cool. They got some kind of terrain in there mixed in. But they've brought together influences of... So many different things, like so many different things. I like, and it to me, I get a very Necron, it's not segmented, but I get a very Necron kind of, um, you know, Satan kind of vibe uh, from the claws and the legs. Now, I know it's a spider thing and all that, but it's a very kind of Satan uh, or Catan uh, kind of uh, look and feel to it, uh, for sure. Uh, they've also, you know, got kind of the same kind of armored plates as the old school Defilers. And literally looking at this, um, I went through, and my plan was to do an old, uh, an old defiler conversion. Um, I had a couple of cool ideas kind of around it. I didn't like the boxy top, but I wanted something that looked a little more kind of alien, a little more organic. And um, I might just resume that project, and I'll kind of do a stream on it or something like that. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> You're doing good watching my stream. Well, Dimitri, we appreciate it, man. It's uh, it's just kind of a chill out thing for me. It's my lunchtime, so uh, yeah, super chill for me anyway. But um, yeah, so so we got some of those influences, kind of the defiler, uh, demonic uh, piece to it. Uh, a little bit of Caradron overlords, you know, kind of big bulbous top. But again, that just kind of the big bum spider thing is absolutely terrifying. I like the fact that there's little mouths and maws uh, here and there. Uh, just you know, just showing more and more that this thing is alive. Yeah, definitely mechanical. So this definitely was some kind of piece. Maybe it would crawl along doing maintenance or something like that. But now it is just this uh, super death machine of doom. Uh, the eyes, obviously there's eyes up front, but it's got that kind of, the vents there to kind of symbolize the eye. I think they tie that in with the forge fiend and the mauler fiend there. Uh, we've got the really cool tentacles that again kind of tie in those uh, influences as well. And the thing is just freaking vicious looking. It's, you know, rams you in the head with his spiky forehead. Uh, the legs are all kind of spiked. And again, there's a lot of kind of asymmetry uh, going on kind of front to back. You know, different legs get different protection. But it's a very organic piece, but very mechanical at the same time. I think you hit it out of the park. I thought it was really, really neat um, seeing what's going on. Now, rules-wise, those cannons are dumb like these are stupid dumb like eight strength eight cannons shooting across the uh, uh across the table with lots and lots of attacks first off that is stupid awesome um and then they're little close combat monsters as well so having that kind of smaller stature uh, i think um is going to be pretty darn awesome yeah it's definitely not like the um uh, the tri crawler from the uh triarch triarch crawler crawler from the uh the necrons but uh just a great kind of mid-size support unit. And I think that's what we need definitely is that sense of uh, that sense of scale. Everything can't be getting bigger and bigger uh, like a Land Raider or what have you. So, no, really, really nice. And, oh yeah, like 
like two or three of these things just kind of on the backboard roving around and then kind of protecting that backboard uh, would be pretty uh, pretty darn solid indeed. Yeah, the Venom Crawler is nuts, Dean. It's uh, it's really good. I, I again, I drive tanks around the desk and all this, but uh, I just kind of kept looking at this thing over and over. And there's details all over the place. There's um, there's uh, cabling on the inside. Oh, and from an assembly perspective, aha, man, they did something really, really cool. So, my, one of my big criticisms of a lot of the models in general is that sometimes it's the ball joint. Now they've got these really kind of big beefy uh, pegs that go into the model to secure it, which is great. Um, I use plastic weld obviously, which is pretty strong. And, um, but the little ball joints, they tend to get a lot of stress. But what they've done, and it's super subtle, as you'll see like on the big joints and stuff, they've got an extra set of cables that comes off. And they did that with the um, Oblitz as well, where they've got these little sockets and all of the stuff, see here reaches back and it fits into these sockets so when you glue it it's just one more point of stability uh you know to keep it from getting too much stress which is nice and of course the um the cords are balanced or they're um they're, they're kind of looked after they're kind of well secured for sure um yeah having all the extra little bits of cabling coming off the legs just gives it and when you like interweave them like this it offers a load of stability uh to that model um, so you're not so worried about things breaking all the time. Um, my plague drones, man, the legs on those guys are kind of spindly, and they just have the the joints. Uh, they've been knocked off like once or twice, and uh, because the model's so big and it's a flying base, um, they take a lot of grief and damage. But these guys are really well set up with these uh, with these cabling, really nice. And even the cabling, if you can see it here in this multi-part leg, it reaches back into the legs and glues onto the leg piece which is separate so definitely it uh, loads and loads of support oh looking at that back you get this cool mechanical spine even though it's not the spine you get this kind of cool mechanical spine uh, at the back I'll bring that back into focus sorry guys um, and they've got the exhaust pipes coming off the back and again it's that very kind of steampunky kind of retro technology uh, but this is very much what you saw on the um, Mahler fiends and the um, the Forge fiends as well. Really cool, like just to see that kind of that uh, those design elements being brought in, nice. And then of course you got this big massive surface uh, where you can put these big huge chaos symbols to really kind of it's almost like a banner, you know, the way a banner works in an army. Uh, where you can get the different colors of the metallics and the kind of the golds and all that. Yeah, really foxy, like just super, super nice. Love it. Anyway, um, and now kind of just drawing us to a little bit of a close. We've got our master of possession. Now, when I first looked at it, I thought oh, that's kind of a cool model. It didn't really impress me like right off the hop. Um, it just looked like another aspiring champion. Like it looked very much in the same vein as this guy, uh, this guy here. What I did like about it was the fire, obviously. So you get a little bit of a color uh, variation in there. It shows that, you know, you've got this, uh, you know, this kind of very demonic thing. What I like about the fire is I think it ties in with kind of the industry of the Dark Mechanicus stuff, the Demon Engine stuff. And he kind of bridges that, that particular gap. And the special powers that you have uh, for this guy are nuts. Um, especially if you've got demons in your army or demonic components to your army. You know, he's got the big kind of gnarly wooden staff. Uh, he's got the, you know, the uh, the big skull with the horns coming off. And uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they actually form the eight uh, points of the star, which is kind of a subtle thing, but kind of cool. You know, the big flaming skull in the back. Need skulls, need flames, man. But he's still got trappings of the the kind of the the space marine here. This you know the the pistols and the and the kind of the buckle in here, the ceremonial knife, but the fetish around like the fetish necklace here of the teeth and the little skull. Really cool. The horns are nice. The face mask is kind of like a goatsy kind of skull face. Yeah, really good. And he's levitating. He's like uh, flying off the ground here, dragging his. Uh, these guys must really, you know, kind of weigh him down. A hot air balloon flying around. 
And then, of course, bringing in the classic, classic chaos uh, from the uh, fantasy slash Sigmar stuff. Um, instead of some of the big cloaks and all that, of like you know, the royal lords, uh, you've got this, uh, you got this kind of, you know, furry cloak going on here. And it definitely stands them out from the Joe Blow Space Marines, for sure. So, kind of a cool and interesting piece. He's a tall piece, which is nice. Um, they could have done a little bit more with him, I suppose. But I think once he's painted up in his different colors, where the uh, you know the skulls stand out, the flames stand out, kind of all the little trophies he's collected kind of stands out. I think it'll look uh, look really solid painted. Um, but yeah, you know, there's more they could have done with it. But I think uh, you know it's not a bad model at all. I think there's 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 loads of visual interest going on here. Yeah, really, really cool. The, um, I just want to look at the, the power. So there's, I'm just going to grab this for a second. So the, the powers that I really liked in here, grab the book, flipping it around on the desk. Um, all of the discipline powers, and I can get that up there. Um, you got the incursion one, which allows you to kind of throw out demons, which is kind of cool. You can summon stuff. You've got sacrifice, um, where you can load up your demons or your demon engines. Um, uh, you know, and if you've got a, if it was on a friendly warp smith or a demon engine, they get three lost wounds instead. So your warp smith can get out there. Um, mutated invigoration. So all the random stuff you can actually increase, which is cool. Uh, straight up possession. Um, the AP of whatever's in there does like more damage. Um, I can add a greater possessed model to my army if I possess somebody by ripping someone up off the, the table. So you can basically kill other guys and like bring stuff in and you can start throwing spawn out the door like crazy. Um, the invulnerable save of friendly legion demon units is improved by one to a maximum of three plus while they're within three inches, six inches of the psyker. It doesn't say there's a target limitation, so a couple people throwing out cursed earth would be cool. Um, and then if you want to go shooting mode, uh, the inter infernal power has a warp value of six. If manifested, then until the end of your until the end of the until the start of your next psychic phase, uh, reroll hit and wound rolls of ones for attacks made by friendly demon units while they're within six inches of the psyker. It doesn't say close combat. It doesn't say, um, uh, you know, like specific machines or specific demons and stuff. So if you've got your Blitz out there, you know what I mean? Or if you've got, like, you're leading an assault and you've got your, uh, your Venom Crawler and a bunch of possessed rolling up. I mean, you could do insane amounts of damage uh, to uh, you know that initial charge. Uh, basically, I mean, if they hit on threes or twos, if you're the kind of the the, the big guy, um, if you're hitting on those great numbers, then basically you're rerolling half your misses and half of your wound rolls. So half of your two wound rolls. So pretty neat. Uh, all things being equal, really, really cool. I want to see new uh, Loa Space Marine Terminators as Terminators were announced for Kill Team. We really hope we get new minis because old minis are quite outdated. Because Chaos got new minis. Yeah, that's right. Underdog. You had to go sort something out? I hope that something was sorted, sir. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, as a as a box, like a... The box is really good. I think there's a lot of value in this box. Uh, you know, they've cut out on little things. It sounds dumb, but I didn't get any dice uh, with this uh, this set. Um, and again, I know that sounds a little weird and picky and dumb, uh, but some of my favorite dice uh, came from the Soul Wars box. I like those blue dice. Um, you know, I had to kind of uh, negotiate with a bunch of friends to grab some, uh, but uh, but I didn't mind it. It was uh, so some of the dice in there are pretty cool. Um, but yeah, so like again, so the value, if I get all these guys kind of in the shot here, the value of the box is pretty solid, um, especially when you start kind of adding up what it would cost to get 10 regular Space Marines. Uh, getting kind of the one uh, Havoc in there, even if you wanted to kind of keep your guys somewhat as salty, um, you know, getting the one kind of Havoc in there is cool. It kind of foretells what's, what's coming. Uh, and if you're starting out from scratch and you really want to kind of get into Space Marines, this is the way to go. Again, I don't know if I would really do two boxes of the, um, the Shadow Spear for the Imperial guys. I think it's really cool to have some stealth. 
kind of infiltrator dudes, the captain, the lieutenant, and all that. Um, but two of the chaos, um, I could definitely see, uh, especially when you start thinking about swapping heads, swapping weapons. I'm sure because they're almost the exact same scale as the other guys uh, that you'd be able to use, um, you know, the arms and, and uh, you know, kind of pauldrons and different components in there if you want to mix it up. Or if you had your own kind of... Um, uh, you know, personal pauldrons. A lot of these pauldrons are all kind of incorporated in, but they wouldn't be hard to trim off and then uh, start again. Um, a lot of these pauldrons were uh, extra that they're just kind of jabbed in there. So uh, you could definitely customize these guys. So that's it for this one, guys. Um, first off, thanks so much for, uh, for dropping by. Uh, it's great to spend my lunch hour with you guys. It's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it's kind of fun, you know what I mean? It gives you something to kind of look forward to throughout the day, but um, the new models are great. Loads of detail. I love the unique poses in the, uh, the Chaos Space Marine guys. You know, I love some of the kind of the, 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 the throwbacks, the homages to the older dudes kicking around with the, um, you know, the fur and the flaming skull, things like that. Um, I do like the fact that you also get special weapons. I think uh, it's... It sounds funny, but the the intercessors kind of leaning, or the um, the Primaris squads all kind of leaning to one use only, where they don't have any kind of flexibility. I'm sure, like in a hyper competitive way, is really good. Um, but um, with these guys, I like just you know throwing in a plasma gun or like a an auto cannon or something like that. You never know when you're going to use it, and there's always that time where you're like, oh man, I wish I had something to deal with that armor, or I wish I had something to do with that heavy infantry. So, um, you know, just as even as a starter to get, you know, the two, uh, the heavy and the special weapons is, is pretty nice. The Oblitz are worth their weight in gold. Um, spectacular, like 115 points. And you're throwing out massive amounts of up to strength nine shots with like crazy AP and crazy damage. Um, they're going to be, you're going to see obliterators uh, pretty much in every chaos force. They're looking pretty, pretty hard. Uh, but even from a not rulesy perspective, they're cool as hell. Like they're really, really cool. The Venom Crawler, scary, terrifying, awesome. Um, I love seeing all the different tie-ins to the different uh, pieces. Even my, uh, maybe not so founded, but I believe it, the Necron kind of influences. And then the Greater Possessed, um, they're, they're both rad. They fit right in. And um, the same thing I loved about my other Possessed models, I really dig about, uh, about these guys. So that's it for this one, guys. Um, thanks so much for dropping by. I got a message out for you. <laughs> the whore sons. Oh, let's show that one anyway. There you go. <laughs> Mr. Russ, your uh your um your message got held there, but uh, I let it through. I let it through. I'm cool like that. It's good man. Um wanna see Noah yeah yeah. I gotta go through it. So no that's it guys. I no thanks for um uh, thanks for dropping in. Um if you like the video, uh please jab the like button. Uh it really helps get it out there, obviously. Uh, I say that a million times, but it really does. Helps with the algorithms. Um, you know, leaving comments in there helps get it out too. Um if you want to support the channel, obviously we got super chat during these things, which is kind of cool. Um, but there's not a lot of traffic, so you don't have to kind of jump up. If you wanna um contribute to the channel, we've got a new join button in there, and you can get a monthly membership and all that cash goes towards support supporting the channel, new models, uh, new terrain for when we start streaming our games. I meant to stream uh, about last week or the week before, uh, but I was quite ill for a while there. Um, kids, uh, I swear to God, they're, uh, they're, they're a pox on your uh, immune system for sure. Um, but uh, we're going to be streaming some games pretty quickly here, which is great. Um, so all that goes to terrain and kind of supporting the, the channel. So again, join button's an option that's, that's huge. And then um, obviously if you're new and you want to subscribe, uh, jab that subscribe button and there's a little bell beside it and you get notifications of all of our streams and all of our future videos so uh thanks a lot for watching guys we'll uh we'll catch you in the next one